Hi. Now for this last part, it's quite lengthy, but uh, what I've done is I've put in the velocity that we calculated in the last part. Remember we said it was 1.3 meters per second. I've taken the unrounded version though, so we don't have any rounding errors in our answer, and I've updated the diagram. So Q hits the ground at 1.252 and so on meters per second. So as Q fell to the ground, P started life off down here, okay? Let's just put it in there. When it was here, P was moving, well, it was at rest because Q was at the top here. And then when Q got to here, P was here, say. Now, when Q hits the ground, P will be, say, here. Okay, and when it's at that point there, it's moving with a speed of 1.252 and so on meters per second. Okay, so let's just put that in there first of all. That there's our P and it's going at 1.252 and so on meters per second. So we just put meters per second up there. Okay, I hope you can see that. Now, as soon as Q hits the ground, P's at this point and the string is going to go slack because P wants to carry on up the plane just for a short distance. It's going to go up the plane and the string here is going to become slack. Let's just make that sling string go slack. Okay, a bit of a tongue twister here actually it sounds like. Okay, let's just make it go slack. So we've got it going ooh, like that. Okay, now it carries on up the plane somewhere up here we're told okay let's just say it goes to about there-ish when it gets there it momentarily stops and then it starts to slide back down the plane again and when it gets to here the string becomes taut and so our problem is to work out how long it takes to go up here and back down again so how are we going to do that well, what we need to do is consider first of all what happens somewhere in between this motion here okay a general position so what I'm going to do is draw on the particle as a solid particle okay and we need to find out what the acceleration is going to be from here to here it's going to actually decelerate but if we just mark that in with a double arrow. It's not going to be the same acceleration as we had over this stretch. It's not going to be that 0 0.98 meters per second per second. It's going to start to want to slow down. So let's call this A, but we'll put a little subscript on it, A1 say, because it's not the same A as we had before in this question. So it's A1 meters per second per second. And to get this, we need to put on the forces acting on the particle P. Well we've got the weight acting downwards, okay? That would be 3G Newtons. So just squeeze that in there. There's going to be the normal contact force of R Newtons. It's going to still be the same R that we had before. The tension though has gone. The rope is slack through this part of the motion, so there's no tension. Plane is smooth, so there's no friction, so these are the only two forces acting on the particle. And as I said earlier, I would always draw a dotted line in there, and this angle in here is going to be the same as the angle of the plane, 30 degrees. So let's see if we can just squeeze it in there. i tell you what, we'll take this out. Oh no, it's not going to come out. Okay, well, we'll just put that in as 30 degrees. Again, I hope you can see that. So, first of all then, what we need to do is to get this acceleration resolve in the direction of motion. That's up the plane, okay, in the direction of the acceleration. So, resolve up the plane. So, applying Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. So, what is the force acting up the plane? Well, R doesn't come into effect because it's at right angles to the direction we're resolving in but we got the weight. Now the weight, only some of it acts parallel to the plane. The component down the plane 
will be the 3G sine 30 degrees. Remember, it doesn't contain the angle, the direction that goes down the plane. So that's going to be sine of the angle here, sine 30. It acts in the opposite sense though, so it's going to be minus 3G sine 30. So take care there, hopefully you've got that minus in. That's the only force then acting parallel to the plane and it acts down the plane. So this is our resultant force F if you like and it equals mass times acceleration and the mass is 3 and the acceleration is A1. So what does A1 equal? Well if we divide both sides by 3 you get that A1 is equal to minus G sine 30. The minus sign is very important here because it's showing us that it's decelerating as we would expect. Okay, It's losing speed. Work this out on your calculator and you get that that acceleration is minus 4.9 meters per second per second. All right. Now where do we go with this? Well what we need to do now is consider the Suvat equation to get the time it takes to go up here and back down again. Now there's various ways that you could do this and one way, okay let's just put Suvat up first of all though before I tell you what way you can do this. S, okay, displacement. Now if we're starting here and we take upwards up the plane as positive then what's the displacement going to be when it goes up there and back down again? Well it's going to be zero. Okay? It might have covered a lot of distance there and back but its displacement is zero. So put zero there. Zero meters if you like. Okay? Suvat, what's the next letter? U. Okay? U. What's U going to be? Well in the positive sense U is the 1.252 and so on. Okay, that's meters per second. V, the final velocity. Now this is interesting, this part here. The final velocity, if we consider up there and back again when the displacement is zero, V is actually coming back with the same speed, 1.252 and so on meters per second, but in the opposite direction. So really this is minus 1.252 and so on meters per second. Okay. SUV A, what's the acceleration? Well the acceleration was A1 that we found out here which was minus 4.9. So we've got minus 4.9 meters per second per second. And then T, that's the thing that we're trying to find. The time it takes to go up there and back down again before that string becomes slack. So how can we find T? Well, there's two equations that we could use. There's V equals U plus AT. Okay. Or we could use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And I'll leave it up to you which one of these that you use. Let's just put this one down. S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Well I'm going to use this one here, V equals U plus AT. And if I do use that, okay, let's just come over here and we'll see if we can squeeze it in. Using V equals U plus AT, what are we going to have? V, the final velocity is minus 1.252 and so on equals u which was 1.252 and so on plus at plus negative minus 4.9 times t. Now if you rearrange this equation for t I'll leave it up to you because I haven't got much room here okay you should find that you get t equals 0 0.511 and so on and if you round that up to say what should we have two decimal places then it becomes 0 0.51 seconds all right and you should be able to get that with using s equals ut 
plus a half a t squared. Alright, so I'll leave it up to you to try that out, okay, as an exercise. Substitute your values in and then factorize your equation because it's going to equal zero here. Factorize your equation. You should find t equals naught. Okay, you can pull out t as a common factor. T is naught, which obviously is not the solution that we want. T is naught when the string is slack initially. It's the other part that you need to solve. You should find that t comes out at 0.511. Okay, but as I say, I'll leave it up to you to do as an exercise.